the end of September, I traveled to Orlando, Florida to go to DARPA's 100-year Starship Symposium. DARPA is asking the question of where is the future of space exploration and what can we do now to push technologies and ideas so that generations from now could people go to other stars. Hundreds of people came from around the world to go to this three-day symposium to explore this question. Dave Nayland, who you see here from DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, and Pete Warden, the head of the NASA Ames Research Center, have spent the last year pursuing this question with experts from a variety of fields, everything from physics to film, on how to advance this idea, how to figure out what we can do now to make interstellar travel a reality somewhere down the road, beyond our own lifetimes. They have brought together experts from a range of fields including destinations, where we might go and how we might find out where we should go, propulsion, how we're going to get there, exploring common thrust systems that are used now um, to the exotic antimatter matter drives um, that are, exist only in theory, to habitation in space, what kind of systems do we have to build in order to put people in a ship and allow them to live for years together. They even brought in exciting speakers like George Whitesides, the CEO of Virgin Galactic, the first private space travel company. They also brought in students who had built what were called Lunabots for a competition to build systems that could be used to mine the lunar surface for resources for early missions into the solar system. There were science fiction panel, panels, multiple panels of science fiction writers to discuss what had become reality from fiction in the past and what might become reality in the future. This track on exotic sciences, as it was called, drew so many people that they had to move it from the smaller conference room it was in to the large auditorium where hundreds of people came to listen to different ideas on how to manipulate physics in order to create warp drives. Why the quantum vacuum? It has some... There was a lot of discussion about the people. How would they live? What would they do? How could you keep them occupied? Would they be generational ships? Would they be one-way trips? And this fellow was actually looking for volunteers for his idea on a one-way trip to Mars. And religious questions were asked. How to satisfy our need for spirituality? What sort of religion might go along? And would this indeed be a pilgrimage of its own to the stars? And of course, the financials. How can we fund this, both in the near term and the short term, and transition to private exploration? The symposium was very interesting and very exciting. We hope to see great things out of the 100-year starship in the future.